Well, thankfully, off the back of our first loss of the season in yesterday's episode against Augsburg, we have got back on track, picking up good results in five games since then this day in a very strong position on top. Of the two Bundesliga table going into our second game of today's episode, a first versus second clash against Bochum, but before then, we take on a team in Hanover, who only last season were also down in this division, so hopefully that's a winnable game for us in the quarters of the DFB Pockel. But we need to do a squad update before then, because a fair bit happened around transfer deadline day. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 58 of the Leipzig Loco with Lokomotiv Leipzig here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up today we take on Hanover at home in a quarter final of the DFB Pockel. We also take on Bochum in a top of the table clash in the two Bundesliga, albeit we are 12 points clear of them. And also a bit of an update on some transfers that did happen in and around transfer deadline day. So it's a potentially quite big episode coming up today if you're looking forward to it then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but if you did miss today's episode, it included a third round tie in the DFB Pockle where we took on Mines and also that game against Augsburg in the league. If you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner. Thankfully, since then, we have got back on track as expected as we were taking on teams for the most part who were down near the bottom of the two Bundesliga table. We start off at home with a 2-0 win over Darmstadt. We picked up a first half penalty here and Alvin Krasnicki did tuck that one away and then Osher Davida came off the bench and scored what I believe was his first goal for the club to ice that result 2-0 in that first game from that loss and off the back of that just before transfer deadline day. Bit of a disappointing result here away at Eintracht Braunschweig who were also down in the relegation zone. Omar Colley scored from a set piece just 10 minutes into that game, but shortly after half time, he made a bit of a mistake giving the ball away. So it was a one all draw. So Colley there, a bit of a hero and a villain. So some frustrating drop points there, but thankfully, it didn't impact us too much going in to transfer deadline day. Still in a pretty good position on the two Bundesliga table. And we did get some business done on that transfer deadline day and seeing as it did impact our staying 11 going into those next couple of games. We'll get through that now before we come back and run through the rest of those results, which as you can see, were quite good. Picking up those nice green dots over Werder Bremen, Kaiserslautern and Grufer Firth. But we did get a left back in on loan to replace the injured Yuri Bass out at the moment with a broken ankle. And we also sold a player, which was not the plan, but the money coming in for him was too good to turn down. It was part of a promise that we made to him when RB Leipzig were sniffing around him. It was Titus Krapika. So first up, we bought in the loanee in Rainy Breinberg from Feyenoord. He comes in. We are paying all his wages as well as a monthly fee. He's a good promising left back out of the Netherlands at 22 years old. Can also play pretty much any position down that left wing. But obviously he comes in for us to be that backup in behind Alessandro Dorenzo with that injury. To Yuri Bass, so thankfully we did find a decent option there to come in for the remainder of the season in that left back spot. But obviously the big news since you were last here is the sale of our best player at the club in Titus Krapikas. As I said when RB Leipzig were trying to get him off us for around about £71,000 seeing as that was his release clause, thankfully he chose a different club and we were able to turn that bid down at the time of around about £850,000 off the back of that throughout the rest of the transfer window. Some clubs kept coming in for him. He was a bit frustrated that we turned them down. We had to make a promise that would sell him for £3.4 million. And eventually a bid of that amount did come in. We actually talked it up to £4.4 million overall, even though it doesn't say so there because it was 2.4 up front, 1 million in installments, and also £100,000 for each of his first 10 games played for Laganis. But Titus Krapakas, unfortunately, did leave us, but overall it's going to work out to be for quite a good fee, hopefully, of £4.4 million. But that is a big sale for us here at Lokomotiv Leipzig. Absolutely shatters the record that was set at the start of the year in that opening transfer window, which I believe got up to around about £300,000, so certainly a lot higher than that previous record was set at, but it did mean, obviously, 
we had to go in search of a new starting goalkeeper here at Lokomotiv Leipzig. We didn't have all that money to spend, unfortunately, because our transfer revenue that we are allowed here to be using our budget is only 30%, or at least it was at the time that we did have to try and find a replacement. So that transfer budget only really got up to £1.2 million, but thankfully found a decent option for just under that £1 million mark. And that was Nikola Ivozic. We signed him for 900000 off of Lommel. As you can see, he's quite a decent player in terms of actual physical build, not too dissimilar to Titus Krapakas, not quite as good in the air, and also not quite as many of those nice yellow attributes there, but still looks a decent option, especially in a bit of a hurry on transfer deadline day. And so far, not doing a bad job, three appearances, and has only conceded one goal. And as I said, that one did come from a bit of an error from our centre back. And Omar Colley, so there's our new goalkeeper here at Lokomotiv Leipzig, Nikola Ivizic, formerly of Lommel, over in Belgium, was doing a decent job for those guys in the Pro League as well as the Proximus League so far. The star's career off a bit better here at Lokomotiv Leipzig, and in terms of attributes, not that inferior to Titus Krapakas, but as I said, unfortunately, didn't quite see all that money that we did get into the club for that Krapakas sale. Also loaned out a few players like Danny Hermel, Nuno Gurk, those players in particular, some quite promising right wingers who should develop nicely and maybe be useful to us in a few years time. And also a couple of other youngsters. So a bit happened there on transfer deadline day, a new left back to be the backup in behind Dorenzo while Yuri Bass is out injured and also a new goalkeeper to come in for the outgoing Titus Krapakas. But as I said, thankfully, still picked up wins off the back of deadline day. A bit narrow there, 2-1. Over Werder Bremen, but then very convincing over Kaiserslautern and Grufe Firth, and it does mean we are still in a very strong position in the two Bundesliga, 12 points clear of Bochum and 15 points clear of Fortuna Dusseldorf. Still feels like we absolutely should be going up to the Bundesliga come the end of the season and should really be doing so as champions. Hopefully that does not get stuffed up potentially in the second game of today's episode in that first versus second clash. But before then, we are in the quarterfinals of the DFB Pockel. And to be fair, got quite a kind draw in this round of all the teams. We do take on one of those who were down in the two Bundesliga last season. And that is Hanover 96. These guys are down in seven teams. They are at the moment on track to potentially come straight back down to the two Bundesliga. They might have to play a playoff against the third place team in the league, but they could be a team that are right for the picking, especially looking at their recent form losses to Stuttgart, Hoffenheim, and Eintracht Frankfurt. So this might be a winnable game, especially being at home and with us having already beaten Bayern Munich and Mainz from the Bundesliga so far this season. In the DFB Pockel, albeit we are going to come into this one with just a little bit of some tiredness. Again, this is going to be a bit of a storm week situation for us playing three games inside of a week, so it does mean some players will have to be rotated, especially if this game drags on a little bit and might go to extra time, but hopefully that won't be the case so far. We've been getting the job done inside 90 minutes, and we'll come back shortly and hopefully make our way through to a semi-final of the DFB Pockel as we host Hanover. And here are the team sheets for this quarterfinal in the DFB Pockle for the first time in a while. We are at home. Just one change to our usual first choice 11. That is that Chiwa starts over Bullock. Not quite on a full green hand off the back of our most recent game there. Are Hanover going very defensive. Five at the back. Two defensive midfielders. Two wingers. And a striker. We lost them both times last season. But on our current form, hopefully, this is a game we can win to go through the semis. Yeah. And we hit the half hour mark and unfortunately the first stoppage in this game is going to be an injury. Osman Tilgan is going to be forced from the field. This already feels a little bit dicey this quarter final. That is not the player we do want to be missing. Now we can bring on either Triple B or Davida in his place. And the beefy Davida, a better player. So we might try him out here for the last hour of this game. But not an ideal start. Still nil all. But Osman Tilgan is forced from the field. Yeah. And would you believe it, Osha Davida has only last four minutes, so there wasn't really much of a choice there in the end because we're going to have to now bring on Triple B in his place. But this is actually a bit of an issue because that means off the back of this, we would have already used two of our stoppages inside the first half. That is definitely not ideal, especially if this game does get close and go quite deep. But Triple B now makes his way onto the field as we've lost two players 
in the first half. And that was it for the first half. Absolutely no highlights in that game. To be fair, it has been quite even. Just a little bit disappointing that so far we haven't got a shot on target. To be fair though, Hanover have only got one of their five shots on target. So it's not been the greatest game. But main thing, those injuries, really costly. And also Baker Boatis picked up a yellow card as well as Dorenzo. We can take off Dorenzo for Brainburger, New Loney from final. But obviously, not many options left. In that left wing role, so hopefully Triple B can still do a job for us in the remainder of this game. We'll get him to ease off tackles and just make that sub at left back. But obviously now it does mean we only have two subs left to use in the second half. And with that one stoppage as well, not an ideal situation. But overall, that was a pretty average first half. Hopefully things will improve in the second and off the back of a bit of a rev up here at halftime. We'll get things back underway. Locked up at nil all. And in fact, there's a highlight here immediately from the restart. Finally, something happening on field in this game, although I suppose those injuries also happened on field, but still not ideal first 45 minutes of this game. Hopefully, nothing too serious there that could derail our promotion push. Now, good foot in there from Coachella, and we do win the ball back thanks to the help also of Garlet centre-back. Triple will be there on the ball. A little bit concerned about him on that yellow card, but hopefully, being an attacking player, that won't come back to bite us like those previous injuries have. Now, challenge there on Chaiwa, thankfully, is still able to keep the ball. Krasnicki slots this one through to Daniel Cueto, who has been in really good goal-scoring form recently in the league. He tucks that one away, bottom left corner, and thankfully, that talking to it at halftime has proved useful, and we take an early 1-0 lead in the second half, first highlight of the game, and we are in front, and hopefully can hold on to this and make our way through to the semis. Great start to the second half, though, off the back of a pretty dicey first half. We go 1-0 up over Hanover. In just a couple of minutes off the back of that goal to Daniel Cueto, I've noticed that Miguel Chaiwa is on a yellow card. Also 6.5, so Racine Bullock can come on for him. But of course, also, because of those injuries in the first half, this would be our last substitution that we can make. And Campanelli is on a bit of an average rating there at right back. So we'll also bring on Florian Huxa, seeing as we may as well use our subs while we can, but that's going to be the last of them. Still 40 minutes left, but we now have a 1-0 lead. And just back in the last 10 minutes of this game, there is a corner here in favour of us. It's cleared away there as we try to pick out Tom Gale. Daniel Cueto can now hold this ball. Hopefully he plays that back to Tom Gale. Now Bullock just outside of the box. We hold on to the ball well here. Try and play that one over for Krasnicki. Plays that one back to Racine Bullock. Thankfully not too many highlights off the back of taking that 1-0 lead and also using our last substitutions very early in this game. We try and find Queto there inside the box, but unfortunately, it doesn't work. And Udley starts to get on the attack here. Down the other end, it's a shocking tackle that from Omar Colley. We've been in such a good situation in this game. 10 minutes left, and with no substitutes left, this is going to make things very interesting as we try and hold on to make sure we pick up a 1-0 win in regular time. No subs, so it does mean Racine Bullock will have to go back to center back. And we might have to pull here Daniel Cueto back to a slightly more defensive midfield position, although he can't play it. So I think what we'll do there is just move him into the more normal central midfield instead of attacking. We'll also move our wingers back as well. So hopefully we're a bit more solid for the last couple of moments of this game off the back of that really bad decision there from Omar Colley. He's had a couple of rough moments in these last couple of games that we have played since you were last here, and that is a really bad one. Hopefully, it doesn't prove costly. Also, obviously, we're going to start time-wasting a little bit, and we might also slow down the tempo as well, but that now makes these last 10 minutes very interesting as we go down to 10 men off the back of that red card to Omar Colley. And in a couple of minutes off the back of that red card, we do have a front here. Obviously, Breinberg is taking his time as we do try and waste the clock here as we are down to 10 men, but really poor that from Omar Colley. And also that throw in isn't the greatest. We nearly got a chance to win that. Now, Adley does get in behind somehow. Big chance, but thankfully misses the target. That was a huge chance one-on-one -on -one with Ivazic and goal, but thankfully still up by 1-0, albeit might be time for us to go cautious in these last couple of minutes. And we're just about to end the injury time in this game. Thankfully, still up 1-0, despite the fact we are down to 10 men. Now it's time for us to time waste frequently. And also, might be a good idea here to go to a low block and just make sure that hopefully they can't break through us, seeing as we are down 
two team member will see if anything happens here in injury time and hopefully we can hold on to this 1-0 lead and make our way through to the semi-finals of the DFB Pockle, there are going to be three minutes here of added time and almost immediately off the back of making those changes. It is a free kick here, but thankfully it is in our favour. Blainberg plays that one over nicely there for Racine Bullock, but poor pass there. Kachala also a bit lazy. Bullock should tie that one up, but somehow it falls to one of their players. He buries it there. Does Max Bishukshkal, and that is just terrible for us at the back. Racine Bullock going back to centre back. But even if he passes Matteo Kachala, also, didn't cover himself in glory there, Racine Bullock actually almost got the ball back for us, but a slide tackle somehow fell to the other Hanover striker, and it's one all, and now things are going to get quite difficult for us playing the rest of this game out with 10 men, and it might also go to extra time, obviously, we're going to try and go back to what we were playing with prior to that red card, although we are going to be without a defensive midfielder, which might make things a little bit interesting, at least before we can get into extra time and get one more substitution. We'll go back to a higher tempo, also not time waste, and turn off the be more disciplined instruction. But that is a horrible time to concede just inside injury time. We were doing fairly well with 10 men for those prior 10 minutes, but unfortunately, a bit loose there at the back by, as I said, Racine Bullock as well as Matteo Cachilla. That ball actually kind of went for him, but somehow Bullock there. Can't quite catch up with that Hanover striker. He tucks that one away. And now we go through the rest of injury time. Will something else happen off the back of confirming those changes, which obviously we wouldn't have made if Hanover did not grab a goal back. But unfortunately, this one's going to extra time. It's not really been a good day at the office. A red card off the back of those two first half injuries. But thankfully, we do now get one more substitution. Obviously, a lot of tired players out there. We could bring on Lucas Search for Tom Gale, although now that I think of it, this could actually be the chance for us here to just solidify our defensive midfield off the back of that red card to Omar Colley. So instead, we might actually take off someone like Daniel Cueto and bring on Lewis Warrington in his place. That would mean we can go back to having two defensive midfielders and that might help us just take this game to penalties, or hopefully even maybe pinch a goal in this one, but that should hopefully just solidify our defence a little bit more as we head into extra time, locked up at one all, but still down to 10 men. And the first highlight of extra time comes just 10 minutes into it, so the way there was on the attack, trying to play a ball through there for, I believe that would have been triple B, but unfortunately a little bit too much on that in hand over here, get a chance to play out from the back, hopefully we can still put pressure on them high up the field, even though we are missing Daniel Cueto, Although good ball out there to their right wing. Now big chance here for Adley. Another big one. But thankfully misses the target. And also he was offside. But so far that's been all that's happened in the extra time. Still one all. And we are into the last five minutes here of extra time. Just that one highlight so far. Thankfully bringing on Lewis Warrington in place of Daniel Cueto. Seems to have just stemmed the flow a little bit. And this game is going to go to penalties. Hopefully we can still find a way through even off the back of that red card to Omar Colley. We'll just sort out our order and come back for the shootout. But hopefully we can make our way through to the semis. And we are back from the start of this penalty shootout. I've just adjusted the angle here of our camera so we get a nice view of the first penalty, which is taken by Albin Krasnicki. He can be a little bit streaky with those, but thankfully that was a good one. Finds its way into the bottom right corner and we get off to a good start. Now it's the goal scorer here for Hanover. He goes the other way. Unfortunately, our new goalkeeper can't quite get there one all after the first penalty. Next up for us is Yukuba Salue, the leading goal scorer at the club this season. He goes near enough to down the middle. Unfortunately, the Hanover goalkeeper reads it. And now we are playing catch up in this penalty shootout. Things just feel like they're not quite going in our favor today with those first half injuries. And that late red card, they score their second penalty and we are behind 2-1. Next up for us, another player who is on a yellow card off the bench. It is Lewis Warrington. Goalkeeper guesses the right way again, but thankfully like the first penalty from Krasnicki, that one finds its way into the bottom right corner. Hopefully our new goalie can make a save here off this effort from Adley. This time he hits the target. Has some really good chances in usual time in that game, but unfortunately this time it is on target in Hanover. Asked up by three goals to two. Next up, another bench option for us. And Florian Huxer, goalkeeper again goes the right way. But thankfully that one goes through his hands back to free all. And hopefully we get a save here off this effort from Rohi. That one goes straight down the middle, albeit 
was a little bit high, but just sneaks in under the roof of the net for free. And now we need to score this one. And I believe the penalty taker for us is one of our defenders. It might actually be our other wing back off the back of using Florian Huxa. And that will be Brian Berg off the bench. He did come on at half time. Let's see what the final leg can do again. Goalkeeper goes the right way. This guy looks very good at penalties, but thankfully that one just sneaks under him, doing a bit of a harbour bridge. And now it's a chance now for our new goalkeeper to make himself a little bit of a hero. If he can keep this penalty shootout going, and it is going to be dire, who will try and put this one away and send Hanover through to the semi finals of the DFB Pockle. He went the right way, but unfortunately, it finds its way into that bottom right corner like so many of those penalties did. And Omar Colley's red card there proves a big difference maker. Up until then, it did feel like, even though it was a close game, we had it pretty well under control, but a two foot from behind and from there, Hanover just had the advantage over us, obviously, as well. Those early injuries did not prove useful because otherwise we might have been able to make a substitution at that time that kind of took it out of our hands with those two injuries in the first half hopefully they're not too serious but still that's not a bad effort losing to a Bundesliga team on penalties especially after going down to 10 men but unfortunately we can't quite make the most of our wins earlier in the competition over the likes of Bayern Munich we get knocked out by Hanover in the quarters in a penalty shootout and of course, back in the inbox off the back of that game where unfortunately we did suffer a defeat on penalties after getting a red card in the 80th minute to Omar Collier, you absolute muppet. That definitely cost us in that game as well, of course, as those first half injuries. Although to be fair, we do get a decent amount of money there. 1.26 million pounds. Can only think how much money that red card has just cost us. But also an injury update here. Hopefully these aren't too bad. First up, Osman Atilgen. It's a broken collarbone. He's out for seven to nine weeks. We will send him to a specialist, but that means he will definitely be out for that top of the table clash. Here we do take on Bockham and also Osha Davida, who came on for him, is out with a groin strain. He will be out for three to four weeks. Not quite as bad, but it does now mean our wing options are quite limited. Might have to call some players up from the second team who aren't as good as those two. So it's going to be an interesting squad we put out for this top of the table clash against Bochum. With those injuries in mind, these guys come into this one as well. And a pretty good patch of form, three wins from their last five and two draws, even though their media prediction is pretty similar to ours. They're doing a good job. And at the moment, look a good chance of going up to the Bundesliga next season as well. But hopefully we can pick up a win in that one away from home and bounce back from that loss on penalties to Hanover and extend our gap on top of the two Bundesliga and hopefully put one foot into the Bundesliga for next season. And we are back with the team sheets for the second game of today's episode. Obviously, I'm actually doing this one a little bit earlier than when the match graphics take place, and that is because quite a bit has happened off the back of that first game, obviously, with those injuries, and also we've picked up a few more in training as well, which is great, and as well as that, quite a few players are very injury-prone, so it is quite a heavily rotated team for this game. Lucas Search comes in for Omar Colley, isn't actually suspended for this competition, but isn't quite fit enough and is also quite injury-prone and also kind of need to send a message off the back of that red card, which did cost us. In that quarterfinal, also Brian Berg comes in at left back. We're seeing Bullock comes back in to partner Lewis Warrington in the defensive midfield. Baker Boaty gets started left wing, obviously, with that injury to Osman Tilgan and also quite a few changes on the bench coming up from our second team. Danny Lewell, Jaralim as well as David Issa. So plenty of changes going into this one, but hopefully we can still pick up a decent result and at the very least keep our 12-point gap on top of the two Bundesliga. And just shot the 15-minute mark, we get the first highlight in this game. It is a throw in here to Bockham inside of the final third. Thankfully, Breinberg has that one away. Baker Boaty plays the ball forward there to Sulaway, and then we try and break down another five at the back formation, albeit Bockham here uh, playing a bit more narrowly up front when attacking midfielder and two strikers. They do get the ball back there, but thankfully we win it back not too long off the back of that. And Salue tries to play a ball through there, not too sure to who. And unfortunately, we give possession back here to the team second on the two Bundesliga table, also looking to make their way up to the top division come the end of this season. Nice ball played over the top there for Forster. 
Plays that one through. It's a little bit iffy there. At the back, it should have been a save there from Ivazic, but somehow comes off his arm and finds its way into the bottom right corner, and they make it 1-0. Just shy of the 15-minute mark. It was a bit of a messy piece of play there. That ball over the top for Forster was quite good, felt like. We dealt with the danger with that tackle from Campanelli, but then a shot, and somehow Ivazic doesn't parry that one away from goal, and we go 1-0 down. Albeit very shortly off the back of that goal to Bokum. We are now down the other end for a corner. Terrible mistake there from Corber and goal. And Tom Gale is there to head that one home. And thankfully, that's a mistake from their goalkeeper. Both teams have made one now. And the scoreline is one all because of that. It was a simple corner there going towards the far post. But that is a shocker from Corber. Actually looks like he tried to punch that. Didn't get much on it. And thankfully, Tom Gale makes the most of it to make it one all. And those were the only highlights of the first half, one for each team where the opposition goalkeeper made a bit of a mistake to be fair, the one made by the Bochum goalkeeper was a little bit worse than our one, but still it is one all going in to half time. We're going to bring on Chaiwa for Bullock on a yellow card and also Huxa for Campanelli for the exact same reason. And also while we're here, Brainberg not doing a great job either for some free subs used here at half time, changing both wing backs as well as Chaiwa in that ball in midfield role. But so far, a pretty even game where goalkeeping mistakes have been the difference maker. We'll get things back underway. Locked up at one all. And only a couple of minutes into the second half, an early free kick here in our favour. Huxa puts that one far post. Lucas Search gets up for that one, but unfortunately, that one goes just high and wide. And it is still one all. And just past the hour mark, a couple of players here have picked up yellow cards. We're going to make our last couple of substitutions, I feel like. At this point, Matteo Coachella can come on for Warrington. On that yellow card, hopefully a bit of a difference maker off the bench. And also Solue was quite tired going to this game. Isn't going that well. We'll give Pligé some rare game time off the bench and hopefully can break through to grab a winner in the last half hour. And into the last couple of minutes of this game, there is a late corner here in our favour looking for Tom Gale this time at the far post. But unfortunately this time can't put that header on target on that yellow card off the back of that slightly fortunate goal that we did score. In the first half, this game hasn't been up to too much, but to be fair, that was kind of expected with a team that is quite tired off the back of their extra time and penalties in the cup only a few days prior. It's a one-all draw and to be fair away from home, I'm quite content with that considering the rotation that we did make. It means that Bochum don't make up any ground on us in that race for the two Bundesliga title, which to be fair, isn't much of a race at the moment. We stay 12 points clear of them with only 10 games left this season. And hopefully we can kick on now and secure the two Bundesliga title as well as promotion up to the top division. But that one was a little bit of an average display. But thankfully we still picked up some points with a one or draw in that top of the table clash. So as I said, not the worst result in that second game of today's episode with that rotation that was kind of necessary off the back of that previous cup game going two extra time and penalties off the back of that prior red card to Omar Colley, which proved oh so costly and also not too bad when you consider those injuries that we did pick up as well. A little bit weaker in our options off the bench in those wing positions, but still we are 12 points clear on top of the two Bundesliga table. Went forward a few more clicks and to be fair, didn't actually impact our situation too much. The remainder of those games on that match day still in a very strong position. Hopefully we can make the most of that over the course of the next couple of episodes, even with those injuries, which we are now dealing with, which as you can see, there are quite a few, but hopefully we don't get too many more. But that will do it for today's episode. Unfortunately, get knocked out of the DFB Pockle on penalties by Hanover off the back of an Omar Colley red card, and then pick up a draw away against Bochum, which is not too bad, as I said, when you consider how long that previous game went as well as those injuries which we did pick up if you enjoyed today's episode then do remember to go down below leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so or really are enjoying the series here on the channel also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well we'll come back next time i think we'll try and kick on and finish this season by the end of this week especially now that there's no cup football to also look forward to really we should be going through now and just making sure we do make our way up to the Bundesliga as champions of the second tier. So obviously we'll come back 
if we get a chance to secure Ermac promotion as well as secure that title. So it could be any of those games probably in April because we should get it done a little bit early but I think we'll come back around the time of those Heidenheim and Fortuna Dusseldorf games because those are two games which are quite big but obviously as I see if we get a chance to secure the title as well as get Ormac be promoted to the Bundesliga we'll come back a little bit earlier if that is the case but hopefully tomorrow we can secure our path up to the Bundesliga for next season so until then thank you very much for watching keep on keeping on and I'll see you then cheers <laughs> Sink to the deep and hurt and defeat.